All right, I had to go. <laughs> I had to go and open the uh, the do five minute Bible studies for to be like Christ for Deuteronomy twenty six and twenty seven. I forgot to open them before I started this video, this last video, and trust me, it would have been moving slower than pond water if I tried to do it while I was doing the video. So it's easier just to stop and start. Here we are. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 5, 8 through 15, Deuteronomy 26 and 27. Um, Father, as we get into your word, we thank you for one waking us up today. Uh, I thank you, Father, that you still speak to us through people, places, and things, through your word, through, through all types of situations, and that you're so good, and that you confirm things for us all the time, Father. And just thank you for loving us, Father. You're so not worthy of your love, but we thank you that you love us anyway. As we read your word, Father, I ask that you increase and help us to grow in our knowledge and our wisdom, our discernment and our understanding. And we know that we truly mean that with all our heart's desire. Father, let us be the salt and light of the earth to share your gospel with anyone that comes across our path. And Lord, let that be many that need to hear the good news. The definition of gospel, Father, the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ, that came and paid the price for our sin, your only begotten Son. Father, we thank you for that. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, so in Ecclesiastes, Solomon has a lot to say about material wealth. He also devotes a hundred or so sayings in the book of Proverbs to the subject of riches and money. Material wealth can either be a blessing, Proverbs 10, 22, which reads, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it, or a curse, and that's chapter 30, verses 7 through 9, which you did not bring that one up. Depending on how one relates to it, and you can see Deuteronomy 8, 7 through 19, which it starts out talking about, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and so forth. Um, God warns us not to get rich by wrongdoing or unjust means. Proverbs 15:27. The greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. Or 22.16 that reads, One who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and one who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty. Or 22 verses 22 and 23, Do not exploit the poor because they are poor, and do not crush the needy in court, for the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. We're to seek wisdom rather than wealth. Chapter 3 verses 13 through 15. Chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, and chapter 16, verse 16. I mean, yeah, chapter 16, verse 16. For the godly, life is better than the good life. Right living is better than rich living. Again, 15, verse 16, 16, verse 8, and 28, verse 6. Money is a fleeting commodity that gives us false security. Chapter 23, verses 4 and 5. Chapter 27, verse 24. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 and 11 reads, Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? Now these are the NIV version of the scriptures because I can just highlight it and it brings it up for me. So I apologize for that. Rather, we need to invest for eternity. Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Yeah, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not steal. And this was written by K.T. Sim. And the scripture reads for Ecclesiastes 5, 8 through 15, The vanity of gain and honor. 
If you see the oppression of the poor and the violent perversion of justice and righteousness in a province, do not marvel at the matter, for high official watches over high official, and higher officials are, are over them. Moreover, the profit of the land is for all, even the king is served from the field. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. So what profit have the owners except to see them with their eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not permit him to sleep. There is a severe evil which I have seen under the sun, which is kept for their owner to, the, to his hurt. But those riches perish through misfortune. When he begets his son, there is nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, naked shall he return, to go as he came, and he shall take nothing from his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. Toby, just keep looking around my computer. No, go, go, you just had dinner, you just ate, go away. And today's scripture is called Eternal Legacy. As dust bowl, as dust bowl sandstorms ravaged the United States during the Great Depression, John Milburn Davis, a resident of Hiawatha, Kansas, decided to make a name for himself, a self-made millionaire with no children. Davis might have invested in charity or economic development. Instead, at great expense, he commissioned 11 life-size statues of himself and his deceased wife to stand in the local cemetery. Eleven? They hate me in Kansas, David told the journalist Ernie Pyle. Local residents wanted him to fund the construction of public facilities like a hospital, swimming pool, or park. Yet all he said was, it's my money and I spend it the way I please. Yikes. Yikes. King Solomon, the wealthiest man of his day, wrote, whoever loves money never has enough. And as goods increase, so do those who consume them. Ecclesiastes 5.11 Solomon had grown keenly aware of the corrupting tendencies of wealth. The Apostle Paul also understood the temptation of wealth and chose to invest his life in obedience to Jesus. Awaiting execution in the Roman prison, prison, he wrote triumphantly, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Second Timothy 4, 6, What lasts isn't what we chisel in stone or hoard for ourselves. It's what we give out of love for each other and for him, the one who shows us how to love. And this is written by Tim Gustafson. What will others remember about you? What changes might you need to make as you ponder your eternal legacy? Heavenly Father, please help us pour out our lives for others in some small way today. And then it reiterates Ecclesiastes 5.13. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, well hoarded to the harm of its owners. down. Oh my gosh, that stupid cat. <sighs> Literally, you heard me almost just face plant in the floor. Yep. Thank God I'm still army strong, because if I hadn't have been, I would have just lost it just then. Probably broke all my teeth too. Stupid cat. Ugh. He saw me shoving the door shut, because James just got out of the shower and he's getting dressed. So shutting the door so Brandon doesn't come in, you know, because the door open, he won't think to, you know, I wouldn't think to worry about that. And it's because he saw the door shutting, he thought he had to dart in the door. And he just about threw me down. Sorry, I'm just glad I didn't cuss. I just offered to kill him, that's all. 
Oof, that scared me. And really ticked me off, too. Mm. Deuteronomy 26. That gave me a headache. Oh, lady. Alright, the wind, still the same. Characters, still the same. Where, still the same. They have not moved people. They're not going to move until we get least into Judges, probably. I don't think they move out of Deuteronomy. I don't. I mean, we're almost through with Deuteronomy, in fact. <laughs> so, yeah. And, in fact, we are just, in fact, I think we are now caught up to where we were in that other daily bread that I was doing when we were doing it with the light Bible study. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Of course, it vanished off the earth, you know, whatever. Anyways, but yeah, it's about there. And that was right around here, 26, yeah, I think it was 27 was like the last day of it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, God, I don't care. Anyway. Here we go. Outline. The first fruits of the promised land and the third year tithe, verses 1 through 19. And, the Israel, and see, there's another thing. The very first thing uh, that I noticed, if you look at, if I go back to the, the Word document, look at, look at 26. Offerings of first fruit and tithes, which goes along with that that uh, Micah, I mean Malachi 3.10 where it talks about storing up about God's storehouse and then here's the first first book, you know, the first chapter that we're reading in, to, in the daily bread that we're doing for today that I'm doing right now anyway, not for today but for March the 5th and it's talking about this I mean just come on, I mean how many coincidences are we going to call these, really? They're not coincidences. This is God all over it. This is too cool. Anyway, it's 26. Okay, so the outline. The first fruits of the promised land and the third year tithe. When the Israelites took possession of the promised land and made it their home, they would bring a basket of the first fruits of their harvest. Yeah. 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 Crazy. To the priest at God's appointed place of worship. When the basket was given to the priest, the offerer was to declare God's faithfulness and given his people the land of Canaan. The basket was taken by the priest and laid at the altar. When this was complete, the offerer was to rehearse the history of the Israelite nation and acknowledge God's hand in leading them from Egypt to the promised land. In the third year, the Israelites were told to bring the tithes of their produce into their towns and share them with the Levites, sojourners, orphans, widows, and the poor, verses 27 to 29. After doing this, they were to declare before the Lord that they had kept his instructions, ask him to bless the ground where the crops grew. If the Israelites would keep these instructions and promise to follow God faithfully, he promised to bless the land, give them prosperity, and to elevate them above other nations. So the application is, don't forget to thank God and worship him for his guidance in the past. Have you ever taken a moment to rehearse your life and thank God for all the times he helped you? Oh, absolutely. Take some time today to reminisce on your life and remember God's kindnesses to you. Then speak to him and thank him for each of those memories. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Deuteronomy 26, 11. Amen. Okay. So offering to first fruits and tithes. And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the fruit of all the produce of the ground which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and put it in a basket, and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who was priest in those days, and say to him, 
I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. There you go. And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian. Just a minute. interrupts me to tell me he's going to go get potatoes. I already knew he was going to go get potatoes. I'll just pick up at four. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian, about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there. Few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. But the Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid hard bondage on us. Then we cried out to the Lord God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. There's that again. I know we meant to sing that song forever. Well, I guess we'll do it the next Wednesday that we do in April. Uh, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you in your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. When you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, and have given it to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat within your gates and be filled, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithe from my house, and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. I have not eaten any of it, when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people Israel in the land which you have given us just as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey, a special people of God. This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore you shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. Also, today, the Lord has proclaimed to you to be his special people, just as he promised you, that you should keep all his commandments, and that he will set you high above all nations which he has made, in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. Okay, 27. Okay, we're still saying when. Oh, Miss Roll. Scroll. Okay, where's this? Wait, what? Oh, wait. Did they move? Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Probably on the plains of Moab near Pisgah. However, it does say Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim 
or Gerson, I think it is, are highlighted in this chapter. These okay. These two mountains were very close to each other, and the Israelites were told to visit them when they crossed the Jordan River. Okay, so you see, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Yeah, you can. Can you? Can you see my mouse? Yes, you can. Okay, so you can see where it says, right above the Mediterranean Sea, up here it says Mount Ebal, Mount Gerizim, and it's pointing. So that is the River Jordan. This thing going up and down here with the weird shape, that is the Jordan River. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Because there's Pisgah. So yeah. Alright. That is, I was wondering if that's what that was. Right on. Hmm. Okay, so the outline of verses 1 through 8. The plastic stones and the altar on Mount Ebal. When the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and entered the land God promised to give them, they were to set up large stones on Mount Ebal and plaster them. They were to write the words of God's law on the stones. She knew I wanted to go to the store, but I didn't want to go by myself, but she's going to run to the store while I'm doing this. Oh my gosh. She won't wait for me so I can go with her because I need to get some stuff in the store, but... I have the reason why I don't like going by myself. Oh, true. I just thought of that. How nice. Alright, anyway, when the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and entered the land God promised to give them, they were to set up large stones on Mount Ebal and plaster them. They were to write the words of God's law on the stones. Beside the plaster stones, they were to set up an altar of uncut stone and offer sacrifices to God. Curses declared for Mount Ebal, verses 9-26. through 26. When the Israelites came to Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, they were to divide into two separate groups. The tribes of Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin were to stand atop Mount Gerizim. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali were to stand atop Mount Ebal. The Levites were to declare with a loud voice a curse on those who disobeyed God. After each curse was read, the Israelites were to respond with an Amen. The remainder of Deuteronomy 27 lists the forbidden actions that would bring a curse. The individuals who would be cursed were those who made idols, dishonored parents, moved neighbors' landmarks, misled a blind person, perverted justice, committed various forms of sexual immorality, those are verses 20-23, killed their neighbor in secret, took bribes to shed innocent blood, and those who rebelled against any of God's laws. So, in the application, God wants His instructions proclaimed in a balanced way. God didn't want the blessings proclaimed without the curses. We will talk about the blessings in the next chapter. Jesus' preaching about God's grace and God's judgment was equally balanced. When we consider our approach to telling people about God individually and as churches, we need to make sure our approach balances the communication of the kindness of God with the severity of God, Romans 11.22. Wait, what? Romans 11.22? What does that say? Wait, what? Glasses. You know I'm not going to pass up the scripture. Come on, you met me. Eleven. Eleven, eight, twelve. Eleven, twenty-two. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. Don't mistake the goodness of God for license. So, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity it speaks of judgment which came on Israel, God's chosen people. But toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, proclaims the condition, the continuing of that goodness pertains to continued faith in Christ and the cross. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. And the modern church on the edge of that is the modern church on the edge of that even now. You know it. Revelation, I just posted a video uh, I think it was uh, Alpha and Omega channel. I think it was. 
Uh -uh. Huh? Yeah, the Alpha and Omega channel? Uh, I think it was. Anyway, it was talking about the spirit of uh, Jezebel and... Man, I forgot the other person. But a lot of churches are now starting to using uh, non-neutral uh, pronouns or whatever for God. So instead of saying in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're saying uh, in in the Father Godhead or something like that, or the Father Tri. Or I don't know how they're putting it, but they're not acknowledging Him as the Father, the God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're not acknowledging Him, not acknowledging Him as a He, Him, Father. Some of them are even calling God Mother. I just cringe for them. I truly do. Revelation 3.15 speaks of this. It's just there. Come on. Fingers word. 3.15 Yeah. I know your works that you are neither hot nor cold, cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knows not that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and white raiment that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent and this refers to the modern church desperately needs to repent for its rebellion against god's divine order christ in the cross and for following cunningly devised fables and it refers to 2 Peter 1.16. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him who overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And this was the letter written to the church of Laodicea. Now I had watched the teaching and I, God, I wish I could remember who it was, doggone it. But it was, so, maybe it was Pastor Christian, if he's ever taught. No, no, it was, it was Pastor Ken. Because when we first started attending this church we were at, he was teaching out of Revelation, so I bet it was him. I think it was. Because he was talking, yes, it was Pastor Ken, sorry Pastor Ken, because he was talking about how the water from like Laodicea and the water from Philadelphia or something like that, one side the water was ice cold and the other side the water was like hot springs, like hot. And, you know, so they would go to this side for, you know, whatever, right? And they would come down and when the, where they came together, the water would be lukewarm. And, and where it came together and was lukewarm, if the people drank that water, it would literally make them spew, vomit, like the exorcist, you know, just bleh, because it would make them sick. And and anyways, he gave me, he told us about that. I, I'm pretty sure that was Pastor Ken. I'm gonna have to look back to when he was teaching out of the book of Revelation. So I'm pretty sure that that was Pastor Ken that, that taught on that. And, and that's where I learned about the, the lukewarm. I'll be darned. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up now. Anyways, we'll, we'll get to this finished and I'll look that up and I'll post the link for that teaching that he did on that in the here on this video so you can watch it because it was really good um, if you like verse by verse teachings and the breakdown of the you know of these some of these words and like the, the where it came from the Greek and what it means and where some of our words come from it, it's, it's well worth the watch I, I really love this church uh, because they just really, not only do they teach you the Bible, but Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, but the way they break it down 
and help you to get a, a better understanding, not just the theology side of it and what God is saying in it and the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts through the message that he has every Sunday and Wednesday when they teach, but also it helps you to clearly see a lot easier what God is saying in his word. I just, you know, and not that there was anything wrong with the way they taught at my other churches at all. But I really like the verse by verse from front to back, Genesis to Revelation, because we need to know the whole Word of God. Because if God didn't want us to study the, the, the Tanakh, He wouldn't have included it. Just saying. Because we absolutely need to study the Tanakh, because it is the foreshadowing of what happened when Jesus came. Amen? Anyways, let's do this. Um, I'm getting off on another tangent. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just the evangelist in me. I'm an evangelist trapped in a Debbie body that's just screaming to get out. Uh, if I just had the, if I had the proper training, I would so do it. And the money to do it and all that. You know. I know if God wanted me to actually be out there evangelizing like that, he would, he would make the way. I know he would. Deuteronomy 27. I wish I'd have found this church when I was a young person. And I could have went to that school because my daddy would have paid for it. I promise you my daddy would have paid for it. Because whatever school I wanted to go to, he would have paid for it. I could have went to school in Boston if I'd have moved to Massachusetts. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave my boyfriend. Because I'm stupid. I was stupid. Anyway, that's you know, neither here nor there. So I just went to school here instead. Junior and actually then joined the army, so it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I don't regret my life at all. Everything that happened, good and bad, was all part of God's plan for my life. So it's all good. Made me who I am now. Deuteronomy 27, the law inscribed on stones. Now Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you today, and it shall be on the day when you cross over the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God has given you, that you shall set up for yourselves large stones and whitewash them with lime. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have crossed over, that you may enter the land which the Lord your God has given you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord God of your fathers promised you. Therefore it shall be when you have crossed over the Jordan. Mm. For the record, I don't do the drinking part of the celebration of Purim. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I do not drink alcohol. Even if I didn't have a bad liver, I wouldn't. Just thought I'd throw that out there, just in case. Just in case anyone's wondering. Nay, nay. Anyway. No desire. I'm sorry. Okay, just as the Lord God of your fathers promised you, verse 4. Therefore it shall be when you have crossed over the Jordan that on Mount Ebal you shall set up these stones which I command you today and you shall whitewash them with lime and there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God an altar of stones you shall not use an iron tool on them you shall build with whole stones the altar of the Lord your God and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God you shall offer peace offerings and shall eat there and rejoice before the Lord your God and you shall write very plainly on the stones all the words of this law. Then Moses and the priests, the Levites, then Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Take heed and listen, O Israel, Shema, Israel. This day you have become the people of the Lord your God. Therefore you shall obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe his commandments and his statutes which I command you today. Curses pronounced from Mount Ebal and uh, I mean curses pronounced from Mount Ebal. <laughs> and oh, that reminds me of one other thing else that happened that was awesome. I came across this video and it was this this person named Nico something. And it's like he had a vision or a dream that he Oh, I don't know if he was raptured or if he was just in heaven or, or what. But, you know, as he was with God and 
and this angel was there, this massive angel with the, the you know, the, you know how we always picture like Gabriel or Michael with the, the armor and the thing, you know, and that's he describes this angel, which sounds like what we picture an angel to look like. And this angel lifts up his voice and he starts singing this song. And then like all these other angels, archangels, kick in and start singing with him, right? And so he sings this song. And I guess at the church where he went, where he sang this song, demons started manifesting in people and coming out and all this spiritual stuff started happening right and so i listened to this song and i'm like okay i'm gonna play this song and i'm gonna play it in my house i'm gonna play it very loudly because i can't help but feel like there's some in this house because there's so many things that are allowed in here through the stuff that two of the people of this household like to watch and listen to and play on video games that there has to be some evil in this house. It has to be. Because this house is so, I mean, it's like the second you walk in, it's just heavy, you know, with oppression and darkness. It's terrible. I hate this house. So, I blast it. And I grab some olive oil, pure virgin olive oil. And I know it's pure virgin olive oil because there's no ingredients listed on the label. That's how I know it's pure olive oil. And I ask God to bless this oil and I put some on a, on a paper towel and I start praying over every window window seal and every doorway all the way upstairs and, and then I just put it over the doorway in my son's room because I wasn't going to go in his room and bug him, you know. I just did it over his doorway. And it was the next morning I got woke up hearing Brandon and telling and James talking about the two dogs that came into our yard and literally tried to tear my cat in half. They didn't. He was still alive, but he was tore up bad. And he was suffering. I think he was in shock, really. And the animal welfare came and got the dogs and, and, and CB and they just put CB right down. They just put him down because he had way too many internal injuries. These were two Great Danes that got a hold of him. One had his head in their mouth, the other one had his leg in the other mouth, and they were playing tug of war with my cat. And this was right after I prayed over my house. Tell me, well, a spiritual warfare isn't real. So I was like, okay, all right, no problem, Satan. Not a problem. So last night, since it was my Shabbat, and it was also uh, Purim, but it was my Shabbat, and James actually had practice because John actually came back into town. Yay! So I had a little bit of time to meet and God for our little time and I put that on and I played as loud as I could and ironically it didn't even disturb the cats usually when I play loud music they run and hide and I had that loud and I was like if you are not of God you are not allowed in this house get out you know in the name of Jesus I, the authority of Jesus get out and whatever right and, and I wasn't having it and then I get on the discord app and I'll be darned if if one of the ladies that's one of the praise team members posted that very song in the discussion she posted that very song and i was like wow why that's a trip that's so weird that i'm just saying i'm just saying isn't that cool though but i'll put that link for that song in here it's a good song i like listening to it him singing it as soon as i heard him singing it i didn't see it in English, uh, here in English, he was singing it in Greek, but I somehow I knew he was singing in Greek. I don't know why I knew, but I just knew. I guess because I hear enough Greek words at church when they're, you know, te teaching us the Greek, the original Greek word or whatever, that I recognize Greek language. Anyway, um, give me just one minute, guys, I am so sorry.
working. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, so. Did I even? How far did I read in this before I stopped to tell you all that? That was so weird. Alright, so let me just start. Curses pronounced from Mount Evil. And Moses commanded the people on the same day, saying, Ye shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you have crossed over the Jordan. Did I even read this yet, or did I just... You shall offer peace offerings, and you shall eat there, rejoice for the Lord your God, and you shall write very plain on the stones. Can we move to keep to listen? Okay. Okay, I think I stopped and when I said curses pronounced from Mount Evil. I think before I went into that, I started telling that about that psalm. Um, anyways, okay, so when Moses commanded the people on the same day, saying, These shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people. And when you have crossed over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Evil to curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Wait a minute. Joseph. Anyway. And the Levites shall speak with a loud voice and say to all the men of Israel, Cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded, molded image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who makes the blind to, I mean, sorry, is the one who perverts the justice to the stranger, the fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's bed, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with any kind of animal. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who attacks his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who takes a bribe to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of this law by observing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Okay, and so then the second part is going to be covering Mark, but I'm going to see. Oh, no. Aliens telling dad jokes. Like, wait, what was it? No, these are so stupid. Oh, good God, it went away. I was going to try to bring up that song. If it'll, if it, sometimes when I play it on my phone, it just makes a buzzing noise. So it'll either play it or it won't. And we'll see. Uh, because... It's, it's called You Are the Almighty God. I'll play the English version. Hopefully you'll be able to actually hear it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. I'll post it in the, uh, I'll, I'll post it in this video real quick. Copy link. Because I don't know if you'll be able to hear it and I don't want to make it anything. But I'll go ahead and end this video and I'll get ready to do the Mark 14 thing, so. I shall be right back. Let me just post this stuff for you. Mm -hmm.